and you know, it wasn't just us, and it wasn't just Obama, but Obama had something to do with it, so the trumpets are all hysterical. Oh, my God, you know, the, the, our black president did something. We got to get rid of it. We got to move it out. And she said that um, the reason why we can back out of this agreement, that we can declare them in noncompliance. See, the agreement requires that every, every month or every couple of months, every 90 days, every three months, the uh, U.S. government, the, the president, actually, the executive branch, has to certify that Iran is in compliance with this deal. Trump has done this twice now. Twice. Iran is doing everything they agreed to. Now, they're also doing things that we don't like. They're still supporting Hezbollah. They're, they're testing ballistic missiles. We don't like that. They're, they're engaging in anti-American rhetoric. They're, they're uh, you know, supporting rebels in, in Syria and in Lebanon. Uh, you know, we don't like this stuff. And so what Nikki Haley is saying is that if we don't like what they're doing, that means that we can declare them in violation of this treaty. Just because we don't like what they're doing. Right? It's like, it's like uh, I have a contract with Comcast to provide cable TV and internet service to my home. But they provide me with crappy service. I don't like it. So I can just call them up and say, you know, I know I signed a two-year agreement, but come get your box. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to say, fine, we'll get the box, and we're going to charge you 500 bucks to, to penalize you for closing the agreement. You know, in other words, it's... But, but, but I don't like your service. I don't like the way you behave. Doesn't matter. It's not what the agreement says. Now, obviously, if you want to send your cable box back to Comcast, that's not going to provoke a world war. Nikki Haley and Donald Trump saying that Iran is not in compliance with this deal that was negotiated between Iran and five other countries, that could lead to a world war. And a big one. These guys are absolutely playing with fire. The Washington Post uh, put together one of the most spot-on opinion pieces. This is by the editorial board. This is not an individual writer at the Washington Post. This is all of the editors. And they have editors who are liberals, who are conservatives, who are none of the above, who, you know, politics is not their thing, whatever. This is the consensus of the editorial board at the Washington Post from what little I know about how it works there. And they write, they, they talk about how Nikki Haley says that, you know, the, the president has the grounds to say that because of Hezbollah or the ballistic missile tests or hostility in the United States, um, Nikki Haley said, quote, we must consider the whole jigsaw puzzle, she said, not just one of its pieces. And then the op-ed says, she's wrong. And by the way, she is. While Iran indeed is engaging in some very worrisome pursuits, writes the editorial board of the Washington Post, the deal is confined to the nuclear program. As long as Tehran is staying within those limits, Mr. Trump has no reason not to certify compliance. And then they go on to talk about, you know, if we don't like the way that Iran is behaving, there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do. We can get other countries to go along with us and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, sanction them. Uh, we can, there's other ways we can mitigate Iran's other behavior. And they, and they continue to write, just because a country ain't perfect, that doesn't mean we don't do business with them. In the national interest, the uh, editors write, Washington has often held its nose and dealt with aggressive or unsavory governments, among them the Soviet Union, Russia, Pakistan, and Egypt. Ms. Haley misleads further, writes the Washington Post, when she argues that it would not constitute an American withdrawal from the deal if Mr. Trump didn't certify Iranian compliance. That kind of spin will convince no one. And it won't protect Mr. Trump for being blamed for whatever follows, including outrage from France, Britain, Germany, Russia, and China, which are parties to the agreement. I just... There's... There are days when it seems to me that this 
end time Christian worldview that is held by some of the people in the Trump administration. And I don't know for certain, but you know, the reports that you get are that, you know, Betsy DeVos is is one of these fundamentalist Christians, uh, or at least of the of the uh, we honor rich people sect, right? Um, the Betsy DeVos is that, that uh, well, actually, one of these right-wing Christian pastors is now doing prayer services in the White House. I don't know if John Kelly put an end to it or not, but, there, you know, you've got a bunch of fundamentalists over there, and they're, they're, they're informed by this Revelations worldview that in the, in the last days... God is going to punish all of us for our sins, and then the good among us will be removed from the earth because holy hell is about to descend, and Jesus is going to return after that. And, you know, the whole rapture and return of Christ and all this, all this stuff. By the way, a theory that Christians did not subscribe to until about 200 years ago. This is a relatively recent interpretation of the Bible. And it is not embraced by Catholics. It's not embraced by most mainstream Protestant religions. It's just this fringe of fundamentalism. But they've got this idea that we live in the end times and that the end times require there to be war in the Middle East. Revelation talks about, you know, war in Israel. That the second temple has to be created. That, that, uh, that there has to be such a horrible war in Israel that only 144,000 Jews are left and that they all convert to Christianity at the end of the moment, right? This is the stuff that is being preached in, in, in Christian, uh, in some hard-right Christian churches in the United States. And this is apparently the direction that Nikki Haley is going, is we're going to have war in the Middle East, damn it. we got to have war in the Middle East. It's, it's time. It's time for Jesus to come back. And maybe he'll kill all those evil Muslims in the process and, and take out some Hindus and some Buddhists too. This is dangerous, dangerous stuff. Joe Serencioni's uh, organization, uh, the Plowshares organization, just put out a press release. Nikki Haley laid the Trump administration cards on the table this week with a new proposal aimed at sabotaging one of Ob the Obama administration's most important diplomatic initiatives, writes the New York Times editorial board. Now, I was just sharing with you the Washington Post. This is the New York Times. The whole idea makes no sense to anyone but Mr. Trump's hardline advisors who see Iran as the root of evil in the Persian Gulf. The president would give Iran an excuse to revive what had been a rapidly advancing nuclear capability and confront the world with another intractable nuclear challenge in addition North Korea. This is the uh, Plowshares Fund that Joe Serencioni is the head of. Europeans stand by the Iran deal. They're, they're saying no. No, thank you. Nikki Haley, stop talking like that. Yes, you're talking to, you know, a bunch of right-wingers who are funded by right-wing petrobillionaires and all this kind of stuff, but stop talking like that. Barbara Slavin for the Atlantic Council's Iran Insight blog says, appearing at a Washington think tank on Tuesday, UN Ambassador of the UN Nikki Haley laid out what appeared to be the rationale for the Trump administration to walk away from the Iran deal next month. Such a unilateral U.S. move would undercut the value of sanctions as a tool of foreign diplomacy. A tool is needed more than ever to deal with other crises, especially North Korea's escalating nuclear brinksmanship. When I look at Donald Trump, gleefully ordering Patriot missile strikes on Syria while he's having dinner with the president of China by way of saying, see, I could kill some people. When I look at Donald Trump demagoguing the issue of Iran simply because our first black president was, you know, a participant negotiating that deal. And it's, it's become so obvious to all of us that anything that Obama did, Trump is going to try and undo. Good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. Which is no way to run a country. It's stupid. It's a stupid way to run a country. When you look at this, you just have to, you have to conclude that this, this infection of our body politic by right-wing fundamentalist Christianity the, 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 the particular bizarre sect 
of right-wing fundamentalist Christianity that believes that we are in this generation, in the last times, and Jesus is going to return anytime soon. Getting ready for the rapture here, folks. That group corrupting American politics and, and pushing us to support, in some cases, outrageous behavior by our allies and to fight against even reasonable behavior by people that we consider our enemies. I'm speaking here specifically of Israel and Iraq, or uh, Iran, excuse me. That, that strain of right-wing Christianity, I mean, this is exactly what Jefferson and Madison were worried about. A government operating on the basis of religious beliefs. You know, just, just, this could be the thing that leads us into World War III. That's how crazy and how dangerous these people are. And I think it's a, it's a serious risk. And it's not getting anywhere close to the attention it should be getting. But these people are, are heading us in the direction of the war. And I think Trump is gleeful.